we're digging deep and asking the questions we need to ask. Years of stress and not just emotional. I was depleting my body. I was malnourished. I'm working out like crazy. I'm eating all these healthy foods. How could I not be well? We have to get back to the basics. We can change the way our genes are expressed. Anyone that wants to improve their health or upgrade their health, they should be biohacking. My name is Renee. And I'm Lauren. We are the Biohacker Babes. We're sisters and we're joining forces to empower you to become your own biohacker and upgrade your life. The Biohacker Babes podcast aims to create insight into the body's natural healing abilities, strengthen your intuition, and empower you with techniques and modalities to optimize your health and wellness. Because life is too short to not feel your best every single day. This podcast offers health, fitness, and nutritional information and is designed for educational purposes only. You should not rely on this information as a substitute for, nor does it replace professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. If you have any concerns or questions about your health, you should always consult with a physician or other healthcare professional. Thank you for joining us and welcome to the show. Welcome to our very first episode of the Biohacker Babes. I'm Lauren Sambatero. I am a Czech movement specialist, functional health coach, and Broadway performer. And I'm Renee Bells, a certified nutrition consultant with a master's degree in holistic nutrition. We are so excited to be here. We have been trying to collaborate for a while, Renee and I. We love biohacking. Our whole family does it, and we've all experienced amazing health benefits from doing it. So we're here to talk to you about what it is and why you should all be doing it too. Yeah, since we learned that biohacking isn't as common of a term as we thought, we thought, let's do an entire episode just on what is biohacking. Um, We're also going to talk about who should be doing it and why we, the biohacker babes, can't live without it. Yeah, we think this work can come across as a little harsh and maybe technical, not so friendly. I think it's a little off-putting for some people because they just don't understand what it is. So what better way to kick off this episode than to read you like a very dry and official definition of what biohacking is? Because it was added to Merriam-Webster last year, the dictionary. I think that's so awesome. So the good news is this is not just a trend. I think it's here to stay. And this topic is only going to become more and more accessible. Renee, do you want to do the definition or should I? Sure. (laughs) I will. I will ramble it off. (laughs) All right, so biohacking is technically biological experimentation done to improve the qualities or capabilities of living organisms, especially by individuals and groups working outside of traditional medical or scientific research environment. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is like, just sounds like a really intense research paper about to be started. So yeah, yeah. let's give our own definitions because that's already not helping our audience, but I love that it's in the dictionary. Yes. At least it's official. Yeah. Renee, what do you think biohacking is? Well, I also really like the definition of a biohacker. I think that makes a little bit more sense, which is somebody who uses science and technology to make his or her body function better and more efficiently. So going based off of that, my personal definition would really just be anything that's hacking your biology. And that can be something as simple as walking barefoot in the grass, spending out, uh, time outside in the sun, getting your vitamin D, any dietary changes. And then it ranges all the way up to like very advanced, expensive biohacks, things like cryotherapy, stem cell therapy, IV nutrition. So there's a really a wide range, but at the foundation, it's anything that affects your biology. I love that. Yeah. So we're really into free hacks, like getting back to the basics, talking about what nature can provide you and also just allowing your body to do what it's best at. So the far end of the spectrum, maybe some of you know about this, but some people consider biohacking when you're actually implanting devices into your body and and really doing some crazy self-experimentation. We're not going to get into that. We do accept that, I guess, as part of the spectrum, but we want to get back to the basics and that's why we're here. I love your definition, Renee. Thanks. So to me, biohacking is utilizing different tools to upgrade my own genetic potential. So even though I was born with a unique set of DNA from my parents, I believe that I can change the way these genes are expressed based on how I take care of my body. 
So this doesn't mean that we're changing the genetic code, but you're changing the expression. This is called epigenetics, and we'll get into this a little bit more later. But your DNA receives signals from environmental factors like what you eat, how you eat, the type and length of exercise that you do, how you handle stress, and that could be positive or negative stress, where you live, the air that you breathe. It really goes on and on and on. But I think the coolest thing about this is that Within our own biology, we have the power and control to positively affect our health and longevity. And it's all based on how we choose to live our lives. Like this is not set at birth. We can change this at any point in our lives. It's never too late and we have options. Yeah, I like your point about epigenetics. I mean, that really is part of biohacking. You know, you're hacking the way your genes are expressed. I love that. And you bringing that up reminded me a couple of weeks ago when I was at the gym, I overheard this girl talking, well, these two girls talking, and one was saying to the other that her mom has heart disease, her grandmother has heart disease, now she's developing heart disease, like, oh, the whole family. And I just wanted to jump in and be like, no, you're so young, you can change it. <laughs> you can change your genes. It's not like the final sentence just because your family has it. Yeah. Had she already done some testing or looked at biomarker markers? Like, did oh, she I, know that? Oh, I, I have no idea. I mean, I was totally eavesdropping while I was waiting to go into class. Amazing. Um, yeah. I sh but you're I, saying I like that she, she was just accepting the fact that she was probably going to have it because it was in her family? Yeah. That's totally what it sounded like. She was like, yep, yeah, now I'm going to have heart disease, you know, like probably start some medication is what she's thinking. I don't know. But Oh my gosh. I wish we could go back in time. I'd go there with you and we would just totally intercept that conversation. Because I, yeah. It, is it appropriate to step in? Probably not. I don't know. <laughs> no, we just collect these stories as we go. I love it. Yeah. No, there obviously is a need for this because I think a lot of people think that, that whatever your DNA is or whatever is in your family history, that just means like there's no other choice that's probably going to happen to you. And that's not true. So I think this brings up a lot of different factors here. I guess what I'm really thinking about right now is the ability to change your thoughts is probably this, the first step in this. So acknowledging that you do have the power, but then changing your mindset and using the power of positivity to know that it's not the doom and gloom that you're talking about, right? And then using the tools that you have at your disposal to get your genes tested, to find out what's going to work best for you because we are in a day and age when all of this stuff is available to you. So something as simple as like a 23andMe test. I kind of have a similar story. A couple years ago, it was like a Black Friday sale. 23andMe was doing this major sale. It was like 50% off. And a bunch of my friends were buying them. And I did the full testing. It's the Ancestry Plus Health, right? And I think you can just get the Ancestry. And right. I have a friend that bought the Ancestry. I was like, why don't you want to do the full thing? She's like, oh, I just, I don't want to know. Like I have all this stuff in my family. I don't want to know. I don't want to think about it. And to me, I go, why wouldn't you want to know if you have the information? Information is so powerful. And then you can do something about that, right? Like not knowing where is that going to get you? This life is going to take you on some crazy twists and turns. Why wouldn't you want to be able to have some control over that? But I think that's a really common fear. And actually, I remember probably maybe four or five years ago, there was an episode of Dr. Oz where he had people on that had done genetic testing and then they were terrified of their results. They had a whole episode on that. <laughs> so it's definitely a common thing, but I'm with you. I, like, I think knowledge is power. I would rather know. Like For me, I did test positive for the gene that increases your risk for Alzheimer's. Of course, it is a little scary, and like I know it runs in the family, but it yeah. has empowered me. I know what dietary and lifestyle changes I need to make to turn that gene expression off. Right. So knowledge is power. Oh, and that's the key, right? So the foundation of, of epigenetics is that you can turn genes on and off, right? So you can right. turn off the genes that may have this, for lack of a better term, like a negative expression that would lead you to heart disease, metabolic dysfunction, cancer, whatever, and vice versa. Exactly. Yeah, cool. So we want you guys to know that there are 
options for you. I can understand why that would be really scary because probably even a few years ago when this testing was not as readily available, it was like, well, if I have the information, where do I go from here? Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, now you can just plug your raw data into like 50 different websites and get full reports on what you need to eat, what exercise to do. I mean, it's definitely come a long way. So we're going to get into all that. There's so many cool things that you can do that we've been experimenting with and we've seen tremendous results from. So I hope you're on the edge of your seat because I'm really excited to talk about this. Yeah. And we'll save a lot of that for an entire episode on epigenetics and genetic testing, all that good stuff. Yeah. Okay. So Renee, who can biohack? Who is this useful for? So of course, everyone can biohack, but I think to get a little more specific with it, I think there's certain populations that it is ideal for anyone that is struggling with a health issue. And that was my personal journey. I started biohacking out of a place of being sick. So I didn't want to be sick anymore. I didn't want to feel like crap anymore. I had to biohack my way out of that. So if you have a health issue that you can't figure out, biohacking can be really helpful. But then it's also on the other end of people that are maybe already healthy but just want to upgrade their health. They want to optimize their performance in the gym. They want to upgrade their brain potential. You know, there's that other extreme. Yeah, I think a lot of people in this space do get started because there's a problem, right? It's hard to have the motivation to upgrade when things seem okay, right? Like you don't know what the ideal or the optimal state is if you're just operating at like an average level. So a lot of people have gotten into this because they've experienced sickness or a real problem. We've both been there. We'll share our stories, but we want to help you to access that point of potential before you get to a problem or a sickness or a setback. And biohacking is asking those questions, digging a little bit deeper and doing the research on yourself to figure out how to be better. So yeah, it's for everybody. Yeah. And we definitely want to reach out to women. I mean, as the biohacker babes, we want to empower other women, especially because the biohacking world can be a little more masculine. I would say there's a lot of men kind of running the industry. So women, you can do it too. Absolutely. And especially with our hormonal changes every month, we really need to be biohacking. Yeah. So, oh my gosh, there's so many men in this industry that are pioneering. So we're going to try to change that. We're not going to shut the men out of this conversation. We want you to stay here. You are welcome. This is for you too. But yeah, we'll, we'll hopefully answer the questions for our female audience. If you're feeling like a little lost in this hemisphere. Yeah. I think just to close out this topic, I would just say the only people that shouldn't be biohacking are those that honestly aren't ready to take responsibility for their health and like make changes. It's not really for someone that maybe is just going to follow the doctor recommendation and take a medication. You want to be active in your health choices, like ready to change your lifestyle, your diet, do little self experiments. Really? That's what the biohacking is. So I hope that means it's for everyone. <laughs> That's amazing. You kind of called some people out. It's all good. <laughs> Whoopsies. We hope you're all ready for it, but I, this is your journey. So only you can decide if and when it's time for you. There's so many factors that go into it. Mental, emotional, it's a huge component. Yeah, we're here to give you the tools and to explain how to make this a little bit easier for everybody. So thanks for bringing that topic up. We hope you are all ready to take responsibility because it's a really fun journey. Absolutely. So we want to share our stories. Renee, I'm going to let you go first. You already sort of introduced that you were in a place of sickness or pain. That's how you got into biohacking. Go back and start from the beginning. Yeah, I think a lot of people make health changes you know, kind of out of a place of pain, right? That pain is a huge motivator. And so I was struggling with chronic fatigue and brain fog, a lot of injuries every time I would get more active. So I was like, okay, something's got to change. So after going to a lot of traditional doctors, having all the lab work run, everyone was like, there's nothing wrong with you. Lab work is normal. You know, you're just a typical 21 year old. You just need to sleep more. But I was sleeping like 13, up to 14 hours a night when I had time. It really started from, gosh, maybe when I was 10, you know, as a ballet dancer at that age, I 
had an eating disorder, which carried on for at least 10 years. That was kind of a constant battle on and off. So I was really malnourished. I was depleting my body, ended up with two stress fractures in my SI joint because I was just so malnourished. And then that led on to my high school and college years where I was just running myself into the ground. I was so stressed, trying to do everything and be everything. And then I got mono, the Epstein-Barr virus totally kicked my butt. And then I graduated college and I crashed. That was like really my low point, I think, when I was like 21, 22. And that was like I said, when I started seeing all those doctors, no one knew what was wrong with me. But it was all these years that led up to that. And I wasn't going to just take that answer from the doctors and give up. So I kept looking, you know, I started meeting with naturopaths, chiropractors, acupuncturists, massage therapists, nutritionists even. Um, and then our dad, our, the original biohacker, he actually helped me a lot too. And I ended up discovering that I had mercury toxicity, the Epstein-Barr virus was still active. And then I had some severe adrenal dysfunction that was really coming from uh, the HPA axis. So starting up in the brain, I had severe dysfunction and it was causing more of this fatigue and brain fog. So I had to hack a lot of things. <laughs> it's been a really long journey, but I'm in a much better place now. And now my goals for biohacking are more like optimizing. You, know, How do I optimize my sleep and my energy and my diet, everything like that? I want to take it to the next level. Yeah. Long story long, that's <laughs> how I became a biohacker. That's amazing. Like what an, um, an awesome opportunity for you to discover that stuff. Did you realize, like, when did you start calling this biohacking or when did you realize that that's what you were doing? But well, you oh, said gosh. optimization, which is cool. A lot of people actually now biohacking is starting to be called human optimization, which I think is an even like easier word to access and understand. Yeah, I agree. I like the word optimization definitely. And I don't know when I really learned it was biohacking, maybe maybe two, three years ago. Before that, I guess it was just self-experimentation to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. What about so, you, Lauren? Oh, I don't know when I started calling it biohacking, but I went through a similar journey of having to do my own research and get my own answers, which is biohacking. I didn't know that it was called that, but I was definitely trying to optimize from a place of pain and setback. So I moved to New York right out of high school so I could go to college at Fordham. I did the Ailey program. I was a dance major. And I was always really into working out, not just because I was a dancer, but I was just really fascinated with the body and, and trying to get better and stronger and look better and feel better. And when I graduated college, just by accident, I walked into a New York sports club because I wanted a free membership. And I thought, oh, if I work at the front desk, I can work out for free. And I was approached by a trainer who asked if I wanted to become a trainer. And I was like, yes, sure. I don't know why this is happening, but I'm a yes person. I feel like this. there's a reason for this. So yeah, I did all the training. I got the credentials and I've been personal training ever since. Um, and in my quest to sort of help others, which is what I really fell in love with, I loved learning about the body, but then I loved turning around and using that information to help other people. And I kind of got sucked into that, just really trying to help others. And also I was living in New York, running around doing this like rat race that most people are familiar with. If you live in the city, I was performing uh, in a Broadway show. So I was working kind of double duty because I had these two passions, like personal training and performing. And I didn't want to like compromise on either end. So I was full out on both sides, had all these clients, teaching class, waking up super early. I was just like really physical all day long. And I crashed and burned so hard. There was a year when I just got sick, like nonstop. It was crazy. Like I didn't think someone could get sick <laughs> so much, but I, I got, I remember that yeah. flu, like a really bad flu. Like I was on my couch for 14 days. I couldn't move. And right after that, I went through this bout of having, I had like bronchitis, laryngitis. I think I had strep throat twice. And then it was like all these colds. I just could not get better. And at some point it was probably a few months of that. And then at one point I was like, I can't, I can't do that anymore. I don't know why this is happening to me because I was exercising like crazy. It was like eating all these healthy, healthy foods. Like how could I not be well? 
So I made the decision to cut back. I pulled back from my personal training job. So I took the summer off because after getting sick and knocked down so often, I was like, I have to figure this out. So that was, I guess, the beginning of my biohacking was trying to listen to my body and figure out what was happening. And I remember thinking, oh, I'm going to be sitting on my couch a lot. Like, I can't sit here and do nothing. I'll do some education. So I stumbled across this course from FDN, which is the Functional Diagnostic Nutrition Program. And I learned all about the adrenals and hormones, cortisol levels. I took this course so that I could learn how to test for those levels and then understand what the levels meant. And I can't believe that I found this. It was just the perfect timing. It's exactly what I needed because I found out that my adrenals were like pooped out. So I essentially had adrenal fatigue, which it's not quite called that anymore because we know it's not the adrenals actually that are not working. It comes from a higher signal, which Renee, you introduced the HPA access, but it was this chain of events where my body wasn't working optimally because I had stressed my body out to no end and it killed my immune system. And apart from just like feeling like crap and getting sick all the time, my body was changing for how much I was working out. Like I got this cortisol belly. It was like really strange. It was, I looked really fit, but there was this circle like around my belly button that was always kind of bloated. And I don't know for how fit I was, it didn't look right. Like I should have had a really flat stomach and I didn't. Now I know that is a cortisol belly. So if you have high levels of stress, they could be skyrocketed. And then over time, chronically, they become really low. But no matter which direction they are, you can experience this cortisol belly where your body's not able to function optimally to burn fat, to have your immune system working for brain health. It's all these things. And I was experiencing the effects of that from doing too much. Like I was working out more than I was working in. And now I have discovered the importance of working in. And just because you're like working out and eating the right foods doesn't mean that you're healthy. You have to find the balance. You have to find um, homeostasis. That's where your body likes to live in balance. I know that word can be like thrown around a lot, but balance is so essential to life. So the biohacking and, and, or I guess the research to find my own optimization has given me the tools and the education I need to find that balance. So yeah, I guess Renee, we've sort of experienced different symptoms and the, the journeys were slightly different, but we've come out at the same place on the board. It's cool. Yeah. I mean, we're definitely passionate about the same stuff, which is awesome. <laughs> And we just want to share this with the world because we think it's so cool. And this is a great lead into why we think it's important for everyone to be a biohacker. You know, like I briefly mentioned before in my story, you know, I think traditional medicine is failing a lot of us. I experienced it personally and a lot of my clients I see today tell me the same story, right? Like your doctor's not going to know your entire life story in the five minutes they have to sit with you. And it's not their fault. It's just the way the medical system is set up in this country. They only have about five minutes to talk to you, see what's going on, diagnose, treat, you're out. So my point is when you're a biohacker, you're going to learn all the ins and outs of your body. You're going to know your body better than anyone else could possibly know. Even with how I work with clients, I spend 90 minutes on the first appointment. That's a lot of time, but I'm still not going to know everything that you are going to know as a biohacker. So that's a huge, you know, a huge factor in biohacking. Just learn your body in and out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we need experts. We need doctors. We need all of these pioneers in medicine, even if it's traditional. Like I, I wouldn't be where I am today if we didn't have those people. And there's definitely a place for that. But with that, you have to empower yourself to know which questions to ask. And that's a huge thing. I think, I think we go to doctors and we don't know what questions to ask. So whatever the doctor tells us, we say, great, that's, that's the truth. And we take it as truth. And then that becomes our reality. And then we never question anything. And I'm not right. saying to go to your doctor and be skeptical. I'm just saying that you need to keep an open mind, do your own research, and keep asking questions because your doctor could give you one answer. And then that could be, like we said earlier, your doom and gloom sentence. Like you start to believe that 
And then there's no other options. There's no choices. And you sort of like get stuck in that reality. And like you said, there is a place for that. And, and I'm not saying don't go to the doctor, like definitely take advantage of that. My point is that if you go to the doctor and your lab work comes back normal, that's like, okay, yay, good news. All of that came back normal, but I'm still not feeling well. So what else do I need to look at? But we don't want to miss out on the basics, like a basic blood panel your doctor's going to run. That could still find something incredibly important. But usually by the time it's showing up on lab work, it's been happening for a long time and it's a really serious issue. So we definitely want to combine this you know, traditional medicine with the more holistic alternative, Eastern medicine. Yeah. So asking those questions before you so desperately need answers is hopefully what we are communicating to you guys today. So let's get into how to biohack. To me, self-quantification is the biggest part of it. Like being able to look at data, tracking, having visuals to see if what you're doing is actually working and seeing how it's affecting you. So we need the quantification to track the patterns and trends. And that can involve genetic testing. It could be something as simple as wearing a heart rate monitor, a sleep tracker, the aura ring, which we will talk about. Renee and I are obsessed with our aura rings. Uh, It's been one of like the most powerful tools for quantification for us and biohacking. There are a lot of options, but the, the baseline is that you have to quantify this stuff because without the data, How do you know? I mean, you could go off of a feeling and you should always tune in and listen to how your body's feeling, but um, matching that with data is really powerful. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And even just journaling symptoms can be really helpful. I mean, that's a free thing to do because I have seen this with clients where I'm like, okay, you know, we've been doing this for three months. How are you feeling? And if they're not journaling, they're kind of like, hmm, I don't know. I'm like, okay, well, you were getting headaches. Are you getting them now? And they're like, well, I guess not. You know, it's like, it's just so vague. But if you have it written down, like on a scale of one to 10, how bad are my headaches today? And then three months later, we do it again. So it can be as simple as like pen and paper or as advanced as the aura ring, like you said. That's funny. I mean, I guess that's why people come to you, right? Well, and to me as well, because they want you to keep them accountable and to ask them the right questions. And that's valid. We all need someone to hold our hand and to help us through this, but you guys can ask your own questions too. Okay. So today let's get into our favorite, I would say basic biohacks. Every episode we're going to try and do this, but for today, Lauren, let's just pick one of our favorite biohacks. One. Oh, I can't do that. (laughs) I don't know. Okay. I'll, I'll try to pick No, I don't know. I don't know. Okay. My favorite one (laughs) just like off the top of my head is probably cold showers. It's a hormetic stressor, which means you're actually activating good stress. So by stressing your body in like a very small dose, you awaken like a lot of power in your body. That's the short answer. We'll get into that more later, but cold showers is good for so many things because it shocks the body into... I mean, waking up your nervous system, neutralizing your nervous system, activating some fat burning, turning on your brain. Uh, It can cool the body down so you can get into optimal sleep and recovery mode. There's so many amazing things for it. It's great for workout recovery. You can do it right after a workout. Oof. Yeah. Off the top of my head, cold showers is my favorite. And then, okay, I already have a second one. I have to say the aura ring, this little (laughs) ring that we each wear to track my sleep cycles. It's been really empowering to find out that, well, I already knew that I was a terrible sleeper. I'm a light sleeper, but I am able to see like how much time I'm spending in each sleep cycle. And I've used that information to really hack my sleep, getting ready for sleep, not only just at night, but in the morning. And then, yeah, using different biohacks, which we'll get into later to affect my sleep. And I never would have known that without the aura ring. So that's where the self-quantification comes in, tracking that stuff. Is that good? Those are my two answers. Cold showers yes. and the aura ring. Of course you cheated, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to follow you on that one. Yeah, aura ring is, yes, one of my favorites for sure. And I know I'm going to talk a lot about that in our sleep episode coming up. But I would say for a cheaper hack, I'm going to go with this one just because I feel like it comes up in conversation with a lot of people often. So... Using apple cider vinegar or 
uh, HCL capsules, either one, after a protein-rich meal. Because health begins in the gut, right? So anything that supports digestion and gut health is going to help overall health. Quite often I see, you know, people come in, they have reflux, heartburn, and they're taking these antacids, which is actually making the problem worse. Usually when you're having this reflux, it's because you have low stomach acid, whether that's from poor food choices, stress, lack of sleep, whatever. But then the protein hits your stomach and there's not enough acid to break it down. So the food actually ferments in your gut. And then that creates these byproduct acids that then come up and we think it's heartburn. And then we take the antacid and it starts all over again. So the point of my biohack is by taking something like apple cider vinegar or HCL, we boost our natural stomach acid, which allows for optimal protein digestion. And then even better, it can prevent food poisoning because it is your first step or first way to fight off pathogens that come in through your diet. So that would be my hack. Oh, I'm going to have you do an entire episode on that because I don't know anyone that has not experienced one of the following indigestion, heartburn, all those other things you just mentioned. That's really awesome. Yeah. We need an entire digestive episode. (laughs) So I don't do the apple cider vinegar. So I'm going to challenge myself to try it out. But you you have HCL capsules, betaine hydrochloride. Well, I've taken them off and on. I need to commit okay. to that. So thank you for the reminder. I'm going to do it, but I'm going to challenge you to do a cold shower because I know you're not really into those. Can we I trade? Can't, I can't do it. <laughs> okay, no. listen. Okay. <laughs> you just have to start out with 30 seconds. And it can be just like cool water, like let your body get used to it. You don't have to jump in cold turkey and just go all the way. You, you can ease yourself in. Well, it. maybe if I go sit outside in this 110 degree weather for five minutes, then I'll go in and do a cold shower. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. So Renee lives in Vegas. It's super hot there. Though in New York, we're experiencing some pretty hot temperatures right now too. So yeah, that cold yeah. shower is going to feel a lot better right now than it does in the winter. In the winter. <laughs> but I do the cold showers all year round. I know. You're amazing. Such and I used to do cryotherapy. I mean, I still do it off and on, but I like the cold showers because like you said, the free hacks are everything. If we can have something that's free and accessible all the time, cryo is great. It's very expensive. And yeah, I'm into the cold showers because I can do it morning after my workouts before bed. Yeah. So- I think more people are turning to like the cold showers and I've even seen some fr- biohacking friends where they buy a freezer for their garage and then they just fill it with ice water and they do dips in there because it's a lot cheaper than cryo. Yeah. I'm trying to get a tub in my backyard Mm, hopefully this year. Okay. (laughs) So we're going to try each other's hacks. This is just the beginning of our biohacking conversation. We just wanted to throw some out there. Hopefully we answered your question about what biohacking is. It is for everyone. It's about digging deep, asking the questions you need to ask, not leaning away from experts. We're still using them, but we're empowering you guys to do the research and use the data, self-quantify, listen to your body, and then use these tools or experiment with these tools to see if they affect change because this is systemic. We're trying to get better brain health. We're trying to burn fat. We're trying to have optimal energy. We're trying to get better sleep. We're trying to make nutrition and food easier. And these are all of our coming episodes and topics. We're going to get into how biohacking can be applied to literally everything. I love that. I think that's a great wrap up. And I hope that everyone's going to join us on this biohacking journey. Yeah. So submit your questions. You can do that on social media to either of our handles. It's Renee Bells on Instagram and Lauren Sambatero with an underscore in there. You also can email us at biohackerbabes at gmail.com. We are here to answer all your questions. We're going to try to answer one question every episode at the end of our favorite hacks, but stay tuned for more. We have so much to come and we are so excited that you are here joining us for this topic. We'll see you next time. Love this episode of the Biohacker Babes podcast? Head over to Apple Podcasts to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. We truly appreciate your support. Until then, happy biohacking. Happy biohacking.